if you were presented with the opportunity to save an innocent life without risking your own, would you do it? Most people would. Ladies and gentlemen, the opportunity is presenting itself today. It presented itself yesterday and every day since March 15th of 2011. That is 3,912 missed opportunities to save innocent lives in Syria. In that time, more than 350,000 people has been killed by the Syrian regime, according to the United Nations. I could have been one of those 350,000 people who, who were killed. As a child, I was detained by the Syrian regime. For three years, I was detained, I was starved, tortured, within an inch of my life. Instead, I'm standing before you today as an example of an innocent life being saved. My mother saved my life. Her name is Hala, and I want you to remember that name. Despite her husband, my father, and her sons, my brothers, being slaughtered in front of her eyes during a massacre in my village, al Baida, where Assad regime and its Iranian allies murdered every man, every woman, every child, even the elderly, the trees, the animals. Very few people survived. Among them was my mother. She led hundreds of sa to safety. And in doing so, she had the courage to stand up to the brutal dictatorship that held me captive for three years. And instead of complaining about her limitations, she found a way to take actions. And despite many failed attempts to get me out of prison, she kept trying again and again. She persisted until I was freed. Her actions may seem like an isolated event, but I believe that by saving me from prison, my mother set an example of how we all must act to stop the Syrian regime from taking more lives and hold its leaders accountable for the, for the countless lives it has already taken. It does not require a miracle. It just requires courage, action, and persistence. During my time in detention, specifically in Branch 215, I was tasked with numbering the dead human beings, including those of my own family members, in a room where they collected all the dead bodies. During these horrible years of my life in Assad prisons, there was a single month, one single month, where it was different. There was less torture. I even numbered less dead bodies. We get more food. I was surprised. But after I was released out of prison, I went back to the media to check what happened at that month. And it was... A, this action, this stop of torture and allowing the food to enter was after the public release of the evidence called the Caesar file. The guards feared that they will be actually held accountable. Unfortunately, the world turned away and the machinery of death continued. It was only one month. I have had the honor of meeting with Caesar a brave, humble man who, in two and a half years in Damascus alone, documented almost 55,000 photos of women, children, and elderly who have been tortured to death. Today we have the photos, the documents of the command responsibility, the photographer, the camera, and the flash drives. We have stronger evidence today than what we had against the Nazis in Nuremberg, but still no international court and no end to the ongoing slaughter of the civilians in Syria. Recognizing the effect of the regime's action on, the, on, the interest, uh, on their own interests, some countries like Germany have already taken legal actions against key members of the Syrian regime. In doing so, they have challenged the limitations of the international system using the power of their 
national courts to uphold pr basic principles of human rights and international law. However, these efforts are simply not enough. I understand that there are barriers to actions, but I also believe in the international system, in the United Nations and the principles they were found up upon. Ladies and gentlemen, today more than half of the Syrian population are displaced inside and outside the country. Well over 350,000 people have been killed and hundreds of thousands remain in Assad political prisons. Earlier today, I spoke on the phone with another individual, another Syrian individual, who I'm honored to call actually a friend of mine by now, whom from 2011 to 2017 was taking, was tasked by the Assad regime intelligence services to bury civilians murdered around, from Damascus and around Damascus. Every single week, he buried hundreds and hundreds of innocent victims of Assad missionary of death. His testimony is proof that what Caesar documented and what I numbered continues to this day. We know, we even know where the mass graves are located. There are countless Syrians who are willing to bear witness to our never again moment. The United Nations, I think, should support organizations like the Syrian Emergency Task Force and other organizations that have been working and documenting the, uh, the, 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 the war crimes in Syria and work on the to support the prosecutions. And they should, the United Nations should support the mechanisms that exist like the Triple IM that actually Provide, being provided and documenting the most brutalities of the Assad regime. As long as the international community is not an option to pursue national effort for the pursuit of justice and accountability, that sh these organizations need to be supported and should, we should support the establishment of a court that can serve the same purpose. Because the people I numbered, including my best of friends, and my cousins who died with me in prison, the people that Caesar photographed, and the people that the grave digger, to the lack of name that described his responsibility, the people who he buried are, they all gone. My family, my father, and my brothers were massacred. They are gone. It's too late to save them. The victims of the many chemical weapons attacks that happen in Syria by, by the Syrian regime, they are gone. We can't save them. It's too late to save them. But there are millions. There are millions. There are millions that can still be saved. And that is my biggest ask to you that you save them, that you stop the ongoing crimes, that you stop the killing in Syria. So when you wake up tomorrow, before you check your phone or do anything else, try to ask yourself a question. I invite you to ask yourself the question. If you were presented with the opportunity to save an innocent life, without risking your own, would you do it? Because most people would. Thank you.